Today we're going to open up a box I got from Kalei King. I'm very excited. There are some parts in here that I needed and some glazes that I ran out of. Three under glazes, two regular glazes. Okay, check. So the last thing is the most exciting. I mean, this is really why I made my order. It was advertised as a pyrometer. This is so that I can check the temperature of my kiln as it fires, especially for the slow down process because I'm getting a lot of crazing, but because it's a manual kiln, I have no idea what temperature it is. I have no idea what it's doing. I know when it reaches the cone and then I turn it off, Hopefully this is going to give me a little bit more capability of being able to cool the kiln down. So now I've got to figure out how to install it. Yay. Good morning. Today is glaze day. I'm feeling kind of sick today. I suffer from chronic migraines and today is a migraine day. So I am getting a way later start than I wanted to. There is a area for a pyrometer to be installed on the side of the kiln. I unscrewed it just to kind of see what it looks like. They have a hole in the metal, but there's not a hole all the way through the fire brick. So I'd have to drill a hole through it. Uh, I have researched on the Crest pyrometers. They're really expensive but they are like a permanent fixture that you could just attach to the side of the wall. The one that I bought is not supposed to be attached to the side of the wall. It's just like a handheld pyrometer. So I didn't really want it to just be hanging off the side of the wall. I thought that that would be really dangerous and would probably get broken. So I am just gonna use it through the peepholes. I don't know, we'll see if that works. <laughs> All right, let's load it. <laughs> I'm gonna try setting the fire mate to two this time. Timer. I'm going to set for seven hours. Temperature dial to 1800 degrees, thumb wheel set to zero. Okay, my kiln is cooking <laughs> and I'm going to set up my pyrometer. This is the Uni T, or I guess it would be unit. <laughs> it is a mini type K slash J dual input thermometer issue. I opened it up and the instructions are, I mean, they could basically be in hieroglyphics. It's another language, I have no idea to read that so that's useless I looked it up on YouTube it's pretty simple hopefully <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> this has a warning in English that's a, that's a step I'm gonna put three triple a batteries we have power ah okay you have to hold down the button and it changes it to Fahrenheit that's good and then we've got the T1 and the T2 input. That's what, so that you could, it comes with two wires. So if you needed to measure two different things at once, you could, but those little wires would burn in our kiln. So I ordered a thermocoupler. Ooh, here it is. Let's see if it plugs in properly. We'll use T1 
So there, there's a bigger slot and a littler slot. And it says negative and positive. So that's pretty simple. You just plug it in. Oh, it's already reading the temperature. That's pretty rad. It's 52 degrees in here. Cool. So I, this is getting some sort of electric signal. So I don't want to touch that with my hands and then install it. I don't even know. I don't think that that would be safe. So disconnected it. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these because I'm going to be putting them in this ceramic thermocoupler. There's a positive and negative side. The negative is red and the positive is yellow. Okay, so let's screw these in. On the YouTube video, he said to put the wire behind the washer, so I thought it would go in those little holes, but the screws don't go in that deep. So I'm wondering if you're supposed to kind of wrap them, but I guess as long as you get them in between those washers, that's pretty good. Okay, that worked. Now we'll plug this in, positive to positive, negative to negative, turn it back on. So it seems to have a, a auto turn off. It's measuring temperature. 55.9 degrees. So I'm gonna try and stick it in the kiln people and see if it changes temperature at all. Can you see me? Can you see me? I don't know. The temperature is like 54.7, 54.3. It's like the temperature's going down. Now it's saying 52 degrees. Why is it going down? I mean, it's definitely warmer in the kiln than it is out here. So maybe I didn't hook it up right. Well, I ate a brownie. I plugged the wiry, like plastic one in, T2, and the thermocoupler one in T1, since you can have two plugged in. So the plastic one is reading that the air temperature is 54 degrees. The thermocoupler is reading that it's 48 degrees. I'm gonna try putting it in the kiln again and see if it starts getting, because the kiln is definitely starting to warm up. Again, it's going down in temperature, not up. 46 degrees. I know it's not 46 degrees inside this cone. It's getting warm. <laughs> okay. I have done this stupid thermometer thing so many times. I have unscrewed it and screwed it and unscrewed it and screwed it. And against all reason, I tried reversing it and hooking up the yellow to the negative and the red to the positive, which is goes against everything that I found online. And it worked. When I flipped it the other way, it kept reading negative. I flipped it technically the wrong way and now it's working. So uh, it's now reading 175 degrees and counting. Before it got to like negative five degrees, which I knew was wrong because it's not freezing here. <laughs> I mean, I'm cold, but I'm not freezing. <laughs> and I know it's certainly not free freezing inside the kiln. Oh my goodness. It's been, it's 1222. So it's been, it's been two hours. Oh yeah, yeah. My head hurts. I can't think straight. <sighs> it's the next day and yesterday proved to be a really challenging day trying to use the uh, thermocoupler pyro 
barometer, thermometer, whatever you want to call it, to, to get, you know, basically to have a reading to cool down the kiln slowly. I was able to figure out how to cool it. I was averaging, I think it was around like 80 to 90 degree cool per hour. And then when I got to 1400 degrees, I read in two different areas on the internet, just on some blog, that at that point you could kill it, turn it off, and let it cool naturally. And it took almost three hours to slowly cool the kiln down on like a medium heat. So I turned it off, I plugged the top piece, took the thermocoupler out, and then I was sitting there for a minute writing my notes and then I started hearing it. The dreaded sound. Crack, 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 crack. You know, it's like Rice Krispies. So, I don't know if it cooled too quickly. I'm really scared to open it up and see what's inside. I'm really scared, but this is all part of the process. In a year, I really hope that me and old Bess will be best friends and I will understand her better. She's a little old school. She's very set in her ways, but that doesn't mean I don't love her. I love her very much. I'm just having to learn to get along with her personality, that's all. <laughs> right now, I have my thermocoupler in the top peep. I have the bottom peep out, I cracked the lid, and it is reading currently 98 degrees inside. And I also have this reading the garage temperature, which is reading at 59 degrees. Oh, and I did have an idea. I'm going to, because I, I have a couple of these, I'm going to drill a hole through this comb, the size of my thermocoupler. That way, I can keep the thermocoupler in there overnight and I don't have to take it out. And that way it's in there securely and I don't have to worry about it being kind of flimsy. And then I'll put it in the bottom peep because when you do a glaze run, the bottom peep's always closed. So if I have that thermocoupler going all the way through here and then I plug it in, maybe that'll work. So I'm gonna try that for next time. It seems that everything with clear glaze is crazed. Everything with clear glaze is crazed. Frustrating. But everything with other, this is, uh, well, I did one. No, this is all stroke and coat. No crazing, it turned out beautiful. And I did one of these with the opaque glaze. Um, I think it's foundations opaque glaze. And then I did one with stroke and coat. And neither of them have crazed at all. They're perfect. They look really good. But unfortunately, all of these are crazed. And I don't know why, but they turned out cute. But this was done with clear glaze. And I actually don't see any crazing on it. So that's good, because it's a mug and I want to drink from it. So that's pretty cool my first hand-built mug with just slab rolling. I think it turned out pretty stinking cute. <laughs> yep. That's my haul. Um, the jungle gems didn't... That didn't craze either. And that's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at that. Those turned out so 
so cool. Super cool. Thank you. Thank you for joining me in my journey of learning ceramics. If you have any tips, please be sure to share them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you keep up with my progress and other creative projects that I do. Check out my website, hardshellslimysnell.com, to see what goodies I have for sale at my store.